Hi everyone. Why are crystals needed? In this video, I'll explain why they're needed and give you examples. Welcome to a brand new tech tip series here at Mr. Carlson's lab. If you'd like to stay current in this tech tip series, definitely subscribe and hang around. I'll have many more tech tips videos coming in the future as well. All right, let's get started. Crystals come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, as you can see here, and it actually gets much, much smaller than this. For example, say a crystal inside of your cell phone or a very, very small device like a watch, they get much, much smaller than this. So these here are easy to hold and uh, to test, and I'll, sh I'll show you this here in just a moment. We'll test these crystals, and I'll give you an example of how these things work. So these are all quartz crystals, basically a chunk of lab-grown quartz, and it's milled down until that crystal will operate or oscillate at a specific frequency. So that specific frequency is called for by whoever is ordering up the crystal. In this case, whoever ordered this Peterson crystal here, this is an FT243 package type crystal. Whoever ordered this wanted this to oscillate at 7.193 megahertz or megacycles if you like, or 7193 kilocycles. So in order to make that happen, that chunk of lab-grown quartz was put in a very special machine and it was milled down. And they're usually milled into a square, uh, basically a square chunk of crystal that's milled down until it oscillates or resonates at that specific frequency. It's a pretty special device in order to measure it. And then of course, once it's milled down to test it and then go back and, you know, basically fine-tune that frequency and uh, some crystals are very very accurate there are a lot of zeros in many many crystals so you can see this one here is rated at one megahertz or you know 1000 kilocycles if you like this is often used in a time base inside of uh, say a frequency counter or something like that yesu in uh, many of their older frequency counters used one megacycle uh, or you know uh, uh, basically uh, 1,000 kilocycle type crystals inside. Uh, this one here is, uh, I believe, I'd have to look at the top of it again here, but is a 10 megahertz crystal, again, used as a time base. Now, the cases are all the same, in any type of crystal can be put inside these things, you know, cut to whatever frequency the the, the person that's ordering the crystal requires. Uh, all they do is they stamp the number or put the number on the case is what the thing has been milled down to, basically. So these are all fundamental type crystals. This one here is an overtone type crystal. So once crystals get beyond 20 or 30 megahertz, uh, milling the crystal down gets pretty, pretty thin, right? And of course that creates um, possibly an unreliable crystal. So what they do is they make the crystal work at say a third, maybe th three, five or seven type overtone, basically a harmonic. So if this is 26.6, uh, if this is a third overtone crystal, if we want to see the fundamental of this crystal, it's going to be upwards in the, in the high eight megahertz range in order to make this little crystal, uh, if you wanted to test that. In order to make this crystal oscillate at 26.610, you would create a tuned circuit that would be basically tuned to 26.610 megacycles or megahertz here. And the crystal would very comfortably oscillate at that because it's designed to operate at an overtone. So again, they have three, five, seven overtones, things like that. Uh, some crystals will get very, very high in frequency. As you can see this one here, you can actually see through the case of this one. Isn't that neat? This one here, I believe is yeah, 52.5 megahertz right here or megacycles. And as you can see, there's a little disc in there that's milled, right? So basically you can picture that as uh, you know, a small wafer of quartz with a connection on each side of the quartz disc. So if you picture like a coin in the center and then two connections on either side would basically be what's going on inside this little case right here. And again, this would be another overtone type crystal right, to oscillate at that particular frequency right there. And that's basically what's inside this package here. You'll come across these a lot in different types of radios. And uh, of course, these are used in all sorts of things, watches, radios, computers. Uh, they were used in televisions, still are used in televisions. Uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, all sorts of different devices. Crystals are widely used in so many different things, it's not funny. Uh, if you have a, uh, a very precise filter inside of a radio receiver, 
receiver and uh, say you want to have a very very narrow filter in there so that it will reject adjacent frequency interference uh, you can have a bunch of filters put together and make an actual very tightly tuned filter inside of a radio receiver they have so many uses now why use a crystal like this over just say an rc network well what happens is is rc like uh, resistor and capacitor networks and lc which would be an inductor and a capacitor network will drift over time so they'll drift off frequency it's very hard to keep them right on frequency due to thermal expansion and contraction you have moisture humidity things like that uh, you have the heating of the oscillator IC or transistors themselves, which will cause the oscillator to move. So you want to take the dependency off that and you want to put that onto a piece of quartz because quartz is very, very stable over time. Now, again, of course, crystals themselves will age and uh, you know they will move in frequency, but a lot of the times they'll have a trimmer capacitor on the crystal itself, and you can shift the frequency of the crystal just slightly by moving that trimmer capacitor, and you can compensate for it. Now, of course, if it moves too far, in cases where you have a crystal like this, you can actually take the screws out of the case, take the crystal out, clean the crystal, take the oxidization off, put it back together, and many times, the crystal will come right back to the frequency that it's been specified to oscillate at. Here's a little universal crystal tester that I designed just with some parts laying around. So it works very well to test crystals at their fundamental over a very wide range of frequencies. So I'll turn this on down here, a little pilot light under there lights up the circuit board. That turned out very nice. So I'll grab a crystal here, just one that I pulled out of my bin. This one here is uh, rated 4803, so 4.803 megahertz. I'll put this on here. Look at that, right on. Just by touching it onto the pads there. This allows me to trim the crystal up. That's what this is for, that capacitor on the top. Now, keep in mind that this tester here is designed to test a very, very wide range of frequencies. If you were going to build something around a specific frequency uh, of crystal that you've ordered, of course, the circuit would be tailored for this. This is designed to work, again, over just basically pick up a crystal, put it on there, and uh, get an idea if the thing is actually working and how far off frequency it is, if it is off frequency, right? This one here is just spot on without adding capacitance. I can add capacitance and trim it down. See that? Right? So not bad, right? Right on. This one here is uh, 8011. Let's see what this one is. 8012. So by adding capacitance, 8011, right? So no problems with that one there. This one here is one megahertz. So I'll put this on here, 999. And you can trim that up to one. Look at that, spot on. Nice old crystal right there. What's this one here? This one here is uh, 8230, 8230, no problems. Uh, 7193, 7193, uh, this one here is uh, 3995, 3995, 7072, so 7.072 megahertz, spot on. 7275, 7275, spot on. What's this one? Oh, here's an old television crystal, color burst, 3579.545 kilocycles, or if you like that in megahertz, it's uh, 3.579545. There it is right there. Television crystal, let's see what this one is. 3579, right there. No problems. This is that little 10 megahertz crystal. Let's see what this one is. 9.999 right there. So no problems with that. Again, lightening up the circuit just a touch to work with this crystal. This would be spot on frequency. This is that uh, 26610. 
So this would be an overtone type crystal. So let's see where it is. 8.868, right? Right, and that's, oh, 869, I can get 869. So 8.870 would be where this one would sit, right? So again, lightening up the circuit just a touch for this, that's only, that's very, very close. So if we go 8.870 times three, so we'll do that, clear. Eight, we'll just go 8.870 times three equals, yeah, see 26.610 right there. Right, and that's what that would be, 26610. So third overtone type crystal. No problems with that one. 11730, this one is. Let's see what that is. 11734, uh, so we'll add some capacitance, bring it down, 11730 right there. That's what the trimmer capacitor would end up doing in the actual circuit itself. Uh, what's this one, 11.090. Nine, nine zero right there. That's me moving this around on the pads here. Not bad. This one looks like what? 3.686, I think that is. Again, just grab these out of the bin. 685, 686 right there. No problems with that crystal. What is this one? Two zero one five, I think two zero one five. Two zero one five. That's what it is. If you'd like to build this little crystal tester for yourself, all the plans to put this together are in my Patreon electronics course. So it has a dedicated video and all the plans, all the files are there for the printed circuit board and everything. This can be put together in a surprisingly small amount of time and it's very useful for verifying crystals in all sorts of different applications. I can't tell you how many times I've used this thing. It's a fantastic little device. Let's take a look inside this crystal Let's see what they've done inside this. So I'll remove this screw. Now, usually these are pretty heavily spring loaded. They've got a very heavy spring pushing down on the actual crystal holder inside. So what I want to do is put down force with my thumb as I'm taking these screws out, because at this point with this one screw missing right on this side, now that I got both of these missing, there's going to be a lot of spring tension pushing up on this and it could crack the bottom of this Bakelite lid. So I don't want to do that. So just remember, if you're ever taking an FT243 package crystal apart, put a little bit of down pressure on the lid. And when I let that down pressure off, look at that, this pops wide open just like that. You can see how heavy that little spring is there. So uh, if two screws were removed and just this one, it would end up probably cracking it, right? Just something to take note if you're working on these older crystals. So here's the crystal holder. I'll grab another screwdriver here to move this out of the way. So this is the contact that presses onto the actual crystal holder itself. Now I'll just bend that out of the way. If I lift the top portion of the crystal holder off, we'll see the actual crystal itself. That is the crystal right in there. So what I'll do is I'll just tip this over and get that out of there. And you can see the bottom portion of the holder, which I'll put right here. And that is the crystal itself. Now that is, has some oxidization. You can see on the corner where it's been pressing on this for years, see on the little four corners. So chances are this can be lightened up and this would move up in frequency. So chances are this is probably a little bit heavy. I didn't test this one. So, uh, and there is, it looks like there is some debris on that. That could be from just falling on the mat. So chances are it could be moved up in frequency. Again, if this was to be fixed, it would be cleaned off with alcohol and this can be held with a pair of uh, plastic tweezers. So basically taken, rinsed in alcohol and then held with plastic tweezers and it can be air blown dry and then dropped back into place. Another thing to keep in mind is these have to go in the correct way. You'll note that there are, you'll note that there are some extruded feet on here. So you can see how this has been stamped on this side. See that? And you'll see these little feet, they kind of stick out 
just a touch on the other side. I'll zoom this right on into the Mac so you can see that. See how those little feet just stick above the surface just a little bit on this one side? That has to be the side that touches the, the crystal. You don't want this entire flat surface touching the crystal. You only want the little feet touching the crystal. So if I was to put this back here and drop this back in, without even cleaning it, let's just see what it does. So I'll put this back in. On there like so. And it's the same with this side here. Usually the side with the little circle in the center is the side that has the spring tension. So you can see this side here would be the side that is going to have the spring tension. This is the side that's going to face the crystal element, this one here, and that would be the back side, right? Because this is lifted. If you were to put spring tension on this side here, it would end up cracking it. The corners might crack because the spring itself is, you know, obviously going to be out there, right? So it has to be put in the correct way. And this would be face down, okay? Again, putting in that in backwards with that kind of spring tension would probably end up cracking the crystal. So you gotta be very careful with that. So put that in there like so. Now comes the fun part of holding this all down while I put the screws back in. So I'll push this down like so. Make sure it's aligned up. Hold that down as you can see. So I'll put two screws in that'll ease me up just a little bit. So one here, and keep the pressure on that, and put one down here. That should hold it okay. And I can put the last one in here and that should be fine. And now that that's tight, and then a bit of a snug, then a bit of a snug. Again, I'm expecting this to be just a touch low. Let's find out. Okay. No glare. Let's see, what is it? 8172, and this one is 8173. So there you go. A little bit of cleaning, and that would take that right up, is basically all that would happen there. But as you can see, you know, they're pretty robust. You can take them apart, handle them with your hands and everything like that. And you know, you're not gonna really damage it or anything. But if you're gonna put this back together and expect this to operate for any period of time, you definitely wanna, you know, I'd be wearing gloves, you know, wash the little crystal element in alcohol and even wash the two little metal surfaces and, you know, you can dry them off with a lint-free towel, something like that, and then put it back together. And uh, this would be very easy to bring onto uh, frequency 8173. So when they move down, they're very easy to uh, to bring up in frequency. You just take a bit of uh, bit of oxidization and in some cases, maybe even some area off and away they go. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe, share, and hang around. I'll have many more videos just like this coming in the very near future involving both modern and antique electronic devices alike. If you'd like to take your electronics knowledge to the next level and learn electronics in a very different and a very effective way, and gain access to many of my personal electronic inventions, creations, and designs, you'll definitely want to check out my electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the Show More tab, and I'll pin the link at the top of the comments section. So if you click on that link, it'll take you right there and you can check it out. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.